Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's Free CompTIA A Plus Certification Training Course on Managing Tasks. I'm James Messer, and in this module, we're going to go through the requirements of our practical application exam. That's the 22702, section 2.3, where we're using system utilities and tools. And we're going to focus in this video on using Task Manager. We're going to go through and look at all the processes running on our computer. We'll look at the resources available and what we can see with each application. We'll see the priority that each application and each process is using. We'll also learn how to administratively terminate any of the running processes on your computer all by using the Task Manager. The Task Manager itself is a handy tool, especially when you're trying to find out what application is taking up all of the memory on this computer, or which one is using the most amount of CPU cycles at any particular time. You can see which, uh, which applications are accessing the disk, which ones are reading things from the disk or writing things from the disk. There's a wealth of information in the Task Manager. To launch the Task Manager, you can press Control-Alt-Delete and select the Task Manager. Some people will right mouse click in the Task Bar at the bottom of the screen and there will be an option there for Task Manager. But one of the hotkeys I've gotten used to using is holding down the Control key, the Shift key, and the Escape key all at the same time. And that will also launch the Task Manager. Let's go into our Windows Vista front end and see what options we have available inside of our Task Manager. Well, as you can see on this computer, I'm very busy doing some very, very important things. I'm surfing the web. I've got a game of hearts going. All right, there might be a document back here somewhere that actually has something interesting in it that I'm doing, but you get the idea. I've got a lot of tasks going on my screen, a lot of things that I'm doing on the desktop. Keep in mind as well that behind the scenes, the Windows operating system has a number of processes and tasks that are also going at the same time that I never see. They're not intended for the human being to see, but they're behind the scenes to make sure that your computer gets an IP address automatically, or that there's a, a, a service that runs that makes sure that all of your schedule scheduled tasks will fire off and start running at the time that you've scheduled them. I never see those, but they are down there behind the scenes. So the task manager becomes really useful to be able to see some of these things. As I mentioned, we can go to the right mouse click in the toolbar and select task manager, or we can use that three keystroke of control, shift, and escape, and we get the task manager screen. Now, the task manager screen has a lot of different tabs associated with it. We have the applications tab. There are processes running on our computer. There's also those services that run behind the scenes. We can manage the processes associated with those in there as well. There's also some performance information we can view, and networking breakdown, and lastly, user information. Now, you can see here, the right here in the applications view, is what's running on my desktop. It's the things that I have normally um, that I'm accessing as a human being. There's the hearts. There's the IE8 main WordPad. That's the document that I have up in WordPad. And I'm on msn.com on my Internet Explorer. And those are running right now. If I needed to end one of these tasks, I can simply click select the, the task and click End Task. And it will end it. That's it. It's gone. You'll notice behind the scenes, my Internet Explorer just disappeared. It's not there anymore. I have to now go down and restart it if I want something to happen. Notice the Task Manager, when I restarted my MSN, my Internet Explorer, Task Manager didn't hide behind that window. That's because you have the option here of always having Task Manager on top. And that is the default, just so that you have access to it. Nothing else will hide it from what's going on. If I was to right mouse click on that, I can take any particular application and bring it to the front. So if you aren't cert real certain where the hearts is, you can bring it to front right there, and it'll bring it right up to where we can see it. Obviously, Task Manager will always be on top in its current configuration, but now that one is the one on the top. The other options here are to end the task or create dump files. There are other things that we can do with these applications too, so that we can manage these applications and make sure that they're working properly. Where you really start to see the interesting things going on is under the Processes tab, the next one over. This gives you a lot more detail of what's happening with the processes in your computer because we have a couple of processes for Internet Explorer. There's my Hearts game. The Windows Explorer itself, the Windows front end that we are using, has a process. There's a window manager that handles the windows on the desktop. There's a separate executable for that. Windows Defender is running behind the scenes to look for spyware and malware. 
somewhere. So I see that it is running. There's a scheduler engine. The task manager itself is an executable. I'm monitoring the task manager from inside of the task manager. And you can see there's also virtual box add-ons, win login, and there's the WordPad application. So a lot more detail here. You notice there's more columns available. The executable, the user that started the application. Here's a column that says CPU. And notice it's constantly changing and constantly moving. We're getting updates right now on everything this application is doing. I added this memory view so I could see what memory each one of these is taking. And there's the description of the application. And again, if any one of these you wanted to get rid of, we could select the app and click In Process, and it would end it as well. Or you can right mouse click and do some of those things that we did before, like ending a process or an entire tree of processes that all have a dependency on each other. Now I've got some options up here where I can select different columns. And if I go to the View menu and choose Select Columns, let's add some things to this. I would like to see uh, things like, let's change the Working Set Delta. And let's add things in here associated with our IO reads and writes and other. And I've also got a need to see the entire command line that was used for that. And we'll click OK. Wow, OK. Now we've got some data on here that really shows us a lot of detail about what's going on. So you have the option on what you would like to see on the screen. You can look at as little or as much information as you would like. But since it's here now, I can start changing this around. And I can see there are some processes that do more reads than others. There are certain processes that do more writing than others. And then I've got other types of I.O. as well, maybe to memory or other devices. Explorer has some other uh, writes that, to that. There's the WordPad has the next highest I.O. other. So I can start moving these around and changing. If I sort by CPU, you'll even start to see it move around on the screen according to what really is the most used service or process on my machine. Now on a, a typical computer, you have a lot more here than just the few processes that I have up. This is a basic installation. There's no additional software loaded on here. I really don't have much of anything running here other than those three apps. You may start up Task Manager, and this may be pages long of the things that happen to be inside of it. Uh, don't be concerned. You can always choose the columns you'd like, and you can always sort by different columns. If you'd like to see what's using the most amount of CPU, you simply go to the top and, and uh, sort this by CPU, either in ascending or descending order. Or of course, you can always sort back by name, and you can choose a specific application and see what it happens to be doing. Occasionally, when you're working on your computer, there may be a certain application that needs additional priority over any of the other applications on your computer. Or you may find that something else that you're doing is taking up too many CPU cycles, and you'd like to lower its priority. Every single one of these processes can be managed that way. If I right mouse click on any of them, there is a set priority option. And from there, I can set it to be real time, high, above normal, normal, below normal, or low. So if I felt that I was running perhaps a video rendering in the background, and I didn't want it to use quite as much CPU because I was doing some word processing on the other side, I can maybe take that particular uh, process and say, set that to below normal. And it will always give you a message that says, if you change the priority of this, it may not work exactly the way you expect. It could cause some system instability. And you can continue by clicking Change Priority. And then that application now, or that process, is now going to be running at that different priority. You have to be careful with this. If you set this priority, for instance, into real time, and that application is not programmed very well, there is a possibility that it could overwhelm all of the other applications running on your computer as well. And that's that warning you get. It's an example of having a system instability. And at that point, the only way to get out of it is to either hopefully get enough cycles so you can get in there and change it in your task manager, or you may have to power off your computer and back on again. You certainly don't want to be in that position. The Performance tab is there to give you a little bit of information about what's been happening over a longer period of time. This, this Performance tab can also tell you a lot about what's in your computer. So you can see, since we've had Task Manager up, this is the status of the CPU usage and how much memory we've been using during that time. I can also see how much physical memory is in this computer. I have 511 megabytes. It's a 512 meg. Uh, operating system uh, environment that I've created. I can see how many system resources are available, how long the system has been up, what's the size of the page file, and how much of that am I using. There's also a great little utility in here called the Resource Monitor. If I click on that, it's going to bring up this view. I have to bring up my Reliability and Performance Monitor. Let me click Continue. 
And what that will bring up is a much more detailed view about what's going on on my system over a much longer period of time. Let's uh, minimize our task manager here real quick, and we'll be able to see this. My resource monitor is now showing me information about CPU, disk accesses, the network, and the memory. And it's giving me a breakdown of highest and lowest. And if I click on any of these, like CPU, it rolls up for me exactly these same processes. And it shows me more information about them, how many threads, the CPU utilization, and the average CPU utilization for those. So sometimes when maybe you're not looking for details on one specific process, but you'd like to get an overall view of how all processes are running, and maybe a longer term perspective of that, maybe the resource monitor is something you should also look into to looking at making sure you can understand the performance of everything that happens to be running on your system all from this one screen, the CPU, the disk, the network, the memory, and more. Let's review some of these things that we've learned about managing the tasks on our Windows environment. What are two ways to start the task manager? Well, if you recall, I gave you three different ways that you could use to start the task manager. One of those ways is to do Control-Alt-Delete. Another is to right mouse click the task bar and select the task manager. And another is to hit Control, Shift, and Escape, and it will pop up the task manager. So any two of these will work. Just remember, if you do Control, Alt, Delete, you have to then select the task manager option. And the right click the task bar, you also have to select the task manager option. The next question, which task manager tab contains global memory information? Well, we even saw that. We saw exactly how much memory was inside of our computer. And that was in the Performance tab. And it was down here right where it said Physical Memory. And the last question is, what utility provides a consolidated view of system resources? We saw that. We saw CPU and disk and memory. And we were able to view that in this short-term view, all of those at one time. It's even right here on the screen. You can see the button for the Resource Monitor. Well, that covers the requirements we have for our 22702 Section 2.3, where we now know how to go through our process list. We can see resource usage for all the processes. We can do termination and priority of all of those processes as well. If you'd like to participate in our message boards, if you'd like to send me an email and watch any of our absolutely free videos, you can visit our website at freeaplus.com. <laughs>